Amen. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. Amen. Today is a good day to be preaching once again to the saints of God. And I'm going to be talking about breaking generational curses. It's a weird topic, but it's very important. We have to know how to deal with them. Hallelujah. Because it's very, very important that we go back to the past and ask God how we can mend our futures. Hallelujah. It is key. Shall we pray? Father Lord, I thank you this morning, King of Kings, that you lead us through the word ministration this morning. You speak through me in Jesus' name. Let the Spirit of God fall upon the people. We know that the word that will fall upon this morning, on each of us this morning, we will use it to manifest the greatness of the God that we serve in Jesus' name. The light of, 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 of our God will shine upon us in Jesus' name. We thank you that your light of the world, wherever we go, we glow and shine. Jesus, my friend. Amen. 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 Can I have someone read uh, Exodus 21 to 6 for me, please? Exodus 21 to 6. And God spoke out in his word. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Amen. You shall make, not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commands. Amen. Thank you, my Lord. Amen. We focus mainly on the verse 5 to 6. It says, You shall not bow yourself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of your fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So it means that there are generational curses. It means that whatever your parents, whatever your grandparents have done in the past, maybe you are not privy to what they did, but sometimes these things will work against you. And we need to have strategies to break them saints. Hallelujah. And today you are here because God brought you here this morning. Because today you are going to learn a few things that you are going to use to break them. Hallelujah. It is not right for a child of God to struggle for things our grandparents did. It is not okay for you to bear the burden for the sins that your grandparents or your uncles or aunties did in the past. It is not your fault, sins. But God is a merciful God. Hallelujah. Yeah. When you ask Him to give you, to forgive you, He does forgive. Hallelujah. So He's saying that verse 6, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and that keep my commandments. So it means that the generational curse that God gives to people. In our lives, he can also bless us, which we call generational blessing. Please do not miss next week. Next week we will look into generational blessings. Okay, so today we are going to encounter generational curses. Learn le how to break them. Then next week we will add ice on the cake. How we can tap into generational blessings. Hallelujah. We've all heard a saying, he looks just like his father. He's got the eyes of his mother. I mean, I remember in the um, um, delivery room. When the girl came out, the first thing I said, has she got hair? <laughs> I, I didn't even, even ask the doctors or the midwives, is she breathing? I said, has she got hair? Because I wanted this guy, this girl to look like me so that she have, I, I used to have afro. <laughs> he said, I mean, it's gone now. God, God has taken it back. I used to have big afro. So the first thing I asked the midwife, my mom, has she got hair? They said, yes. I said, thank you, Lord. I never bothered to ask, is she breathing? Is she alive? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I wanted her to take the genes, isn't it? Yeah. The genes. I mean, you look at Sammy and the mother, you see that, wow, there's a remembrance. Yeah. Resemblance. Yeah. You look at our woman of, um, uh, woman of God and the mom and dad, you see that. Yeah. There's that re 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 resemblance. Pardon me. Resemblance. You look at our generations, you can see that, oh, this one looks like the auntie. You can see that it's through the blood, isn't it? That's a generation you pass the genes on. So it means that you can also pass curses on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
So, the physical characteristics of parents pass on to your children. You might be short, you might be tall, you might be light skinned, you might be dark based on the physical traits of your ancestors. But one thing is for sure, much of who you are is physically influenced by your genes. Like I say, it is physically influenced by your genes. Because sometimes they say, uh, human beings, we are, we are in two places, whether you are from the same family or not. Sometimes you go to a place and you see a, a replica of somebody you know. Those are just coincidences because, I mean, God does his, his ways. But you can see that, I mean, you move to a place and you know a certain family and you meet somebody new, you do not know them. But you can see there's a striking re re resemblance of that person, isn't it? You can even tell the way they walk, the way they speak. Is uh, This one belongs to this family. Hallelujah. So, heredity, which is our genes, it influences your talents, your abilities, your traits, and even how you think and behave. We've all heard the phrase, like father, like son, like mother, like daughter. But in the spiritual realm, you also pass off these traits. In the spiritual realms, the traits that you and I we have, we pass it on. If you are a prayerful man or woman of God, it channels through your family. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you are very, very laid back, it channels through your family. Hallelujah. Yeah. It needs someone to be broken. Yeah. There's a cord. It's like the umbilical cord with your, with your mom when the baby is inside. Yeah. When the child comes out, they cut it, isn't it? Yeah. It means that now the child is free from the mom. So if you want to be free from all these generational curses, you have to what? Use Christ to cut that cord. But there's a process to that cord. You cannot just wake up one day and say, look, I find it that day. You are cutting. No. You need to go through a process. It's like when you're a doctor and you want to become, I mean, you're doing brain surgery, you have to go through a process. You have to, uh, what do you call it, sterilize the, the, the equipment. I mean, wear gloves, wear masks. There's a whole lot. Wash your hands. There's a whole lot. You cannot just walk in one day and then just put on your glass and start operating. No, it doesn't work. There should be a process. And the process starts with what? Christ. Because Christ, he shed his blood on the cross so that you and I will be free from all curses. Hallelujah. Yeah. So God says that his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you do not know what your grandparents did. That's lack of knowledge, isn't it? So if you don't know something, how are you going to break it? Is it possible to break something you do not know about? No, it's not. It is highly impossible to break something you have no idea. But you can break things when you know how? I mean, you can only enter this door with a set key. Yes, sir. Your house key cannot, can never, it's physically impossible to open this door. Amen. You can put it in, it will fit in, but you tell it will never fit in. Because the, the way the keys are cut, there, there are some codes. I mean, you, I, 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 I mean you see, you go to the, the, the key cutters, they put the key in, the, in, the, in that the locksmith, they put the key in their machine. And then they press some codes, and the machine just moves, and then it comes out. If you put inside your door, it opens. You go to the next door, but it will never open. Why? Because there's a code that this man knew, or woman knew, to enter into that machine to print your key. Amen. And that key is only for that door. So my key cannot never um, open your door. Likewise, the generational curses upon somebody else's life can never come on to your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Saints, it can only come through your bloodline. And guess what? The bloodline of Christ also came through to deliver you from sins. Yeah. Hallelujah. So generation curses from your bloodlines, but the bloodline of Christ is what will set you free. Yeah. There's nothing to it. The blood that he shed on the, on the cross, that is the only blood that is capable of setting us free. Saints, there's no blood. I mean, I was speaking with, with, with a, a very good friend of mine, very good friend of mine. We've been friends for years. I love when he loves me. And there's a few things that are going on. And he said, the first thing he said, look, I'm going to ask somebody to buy a white sheep and go and do ritual somewhere. I said, wow. Something happened. He's, 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 do, he's doing something. Something happened. And he's not happy about it. And the first thing he thought was, let me go and get a white sheep. Go and kill and then cleanse the place. And I said, oh my God. And I said, have you forgotten the God you said? Have you got forgotten the Christ that you said? What blood is greater than the blood of Christ? The, the, the blood of sheep? No! 
I mean, you are even bringing more cases than you are to the place. You are bringing more cases. Hallelujah. So I said, we have to be careful how we take things. So signs of generational curses. You need to know the signs of generational uh, curses from your generation. That way you can identify the types of curses that may be running in your family. However, please do not be quick to point out issues in your life that, oh, this is a generational curse. No, please. <laughs> there, there are some issues. It's got nothing to do with generational curses. Those issues are your main, your, your own make. Please. But there are some issues which, I mean, I'm going to tell you about this morning. That these issues, when you can identify in your life, you can say, okay, this is we're bordering on the, on the, on the borderline of, of a curse. So let me go to work and break it. The first type of generational curse is fear and emotional instability. Fear. Sense of God. You can see somebody who's, who's been in, in the Christian ministry for years, but their heart is pounding every day. They are fearful. Saints, in Deuteronomy, God says, He will strike those who disobey with madness, blindness, and confusion, meaning that insanity, irrational behavior, silliness, confusion, and indecision may be generational curses. When people with this generational curse are overcome by fear or emotions, they make unwise decisions and senseless decisions. I mean, we have so many friends. You have maybe you have some friends somewhere. You 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 you, you, you look at their lives and the things that they do. You say, ah, this one, even a ten year old will not do it. It's not it's not their fault. Though. It's a guy somewhere. It needs to be broken. Yes. And you can see that some people they are matured in life, in age, in ministry, everything they do, but they behave as if I mean they are in their youth. Saints. These are all some of the signs of generational curses. It is not their doing. And sometimes you speak with somebody and say, ah, this is so easy to understand. But they find it so challenging to understand. You, you do not get it, isn't it? Sometimes you say, this is too easy. Come on. Guess what? Some, something somewhere is locked. It's locked. It needs to be open so that information can flow through. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can see that I mean, in, in adult, adult, adult school, adult education, you can see that one friend is find it very challenging to understand a single concept. Then they keep on asking, please, how do I do this? Maybe some coursework. Jeez, Lord. You take them through the camp the next week, they ask you. It's not their fault, please. It's not their fault. Something somewhere is locked up. We need to release that thing. Amen. Amen. Saints of God, God loves you. So some people who have continued struggling, frustration, and internal warfare. I mean, the Challenging thing is having internal warfare. I would rather have external warfare than internal warfare because it kills you. External warfare, people can see it and then they'll be, they have sympathy on you. I mean, your demeanor, your face can even show that, oh, I mean, something is not going right so that people... But when you have internal warfare, you have it inside, it's not out. People find it very, very challenging to be able to tap into say, oh, let me pray with you. Because since the first thing you have to do whenever you encounter people, friends, any issue they put on the table, say, please, let, let's, let's pray. It is key. Start with prayer, end with prayer. It is key. They bring their situation, please, put it down. Forget about it, let's pray. Hold hands with them. Pray with them. Because you have no idea what you are releasing the spirit realm. That moment, that short prayer, maybe at work. You see, we are too casual at work, and we do not even proclaim the king that we serve. Some colleagues, they bring issues from home. And we do not even hold hands and pray with them. It is not right. You have to proclaim Christ everywhere we go through simple acts like this. Hold hands with them and pray with them. Amen. You are setting somebody some, somewhere free. Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe this is the only encounter that somebody has held their hand to pray for them. Yes. That's your ministry. Do not let it go. It's an opportunity to minister Christ to them. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. So, another thing to note about the Lord the national guys is people with double-mindedness. You speak with somebody and their mind is every left, right, left. They are not single-mindedness. Hallelujah. They struggle to align their lives with the word of God. When they try to renew their minds, they experience a lot of warfare. And this discourages them for abiding the word of God. The Bible says we shouldn't conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of our mind. If you do not renew your mind daily with the word of God, I mean, Satan will just play you like soccer. Football, hit you left and right. The, the, the word of God is your two-edged sword, like Prophet said this morning. It is your two-edged sword. 
There's nothing to it. Cast both left and right. Saints, the word of God, every single day at least, take your Bible and read. Read it because you are strengthening yourself. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. The next one is um, hereditary illnesses. So it sounds normal for family members who have the same disease in this current world. Evil seems familiar to us that we may fail to see some of the things as generational curses. You can see that, I mean, we're in the UK, so a lot of um, people develop cancers. But you can see one family, they have cancer, cancer is killing them left and right. It's not their fault, this part of the initial cancers, we have to break them. Okay, so some illnesses are part of the initial cancers. Hallelujah. And chronic wounds. I mean, I've seen, I've seen people with huge wounds, either on their legs, their arms and their backs and they are so large and big that you are thinking wow wherever they take it it doesn't heal whatever they do it doesn't heal these are some of the cases that they are going through like I said maybe it's not their fault in Deuteronomy God said to the Israelites that he will attack them with bodies of Egypt that if they disobey the bodies are bought for open source so if someone down the line a person in your family is obeyed God. These are some, some, uh, a sign of the generational curse. So the wound cannot heal. This curse attacks the tops of a person's head, the feet, the soles, the legs, and the back. And barrenness and infertility. The word says that curse shall be the fruit of the body. The body, the word in the body in this context is the same as the Hebrew word be, beaten, which means the womb or the abdomen. The womb is a reproductive organ. So barrenness and infertility complicates, complications can be a curse. And when you're going through a situation like this, most people, they have miscarriages, tumors, and cysts, kidney stones, and um, there's, there's one thing, um, fibroid. Yes, fibroid. When you have all these things, this might be some signs of the original curses. And it needs to be broken. Because see, the Bible says that we have to what? Give birth to what? Have a lot of people on the planet, like the sea, that is the son of the sea. Hallelujah. God has blessed us enough to also be a blessing to our generation. God doesn't cause anybody not to have kids. We have to find a way to break barrenness. Hallelujah. There should be a way to go to God and say, look, God, this is not my portion. You brought me to have a seed of my own. Show me the way. God will give you the plate. Because the Bible says, if you do not ask, how, how is God going to give it to you? He knows that you need something, but some of you do not ask God, how is God, God going to give it to you? You're going to do your GCSE next year. If you do not ask God for wisdom, do you think God will give you wisdom? Yes, He will give you, but not a lot. So you have to ask Him for more. Say, Lord, I need wisdom. Eh? Because your generation is going to be a generation of blessed generation. From you to your to, 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 to your, 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 your your children's children's children. The Bible says to your fourth, the, the third and the fourth generation are going to bless you. Because you are sat here this morning, you have been a, a pillar in this ministry. Your generation is going to be blessed. And I use you as a point of contact for every person in this church, especially the youth. That your generation is going to be blessed. And we also thank mom and dad for giving us a blessed generation in the, the, the life of woman of God and all your children. Because without the prayers that mom you prayed, every night your daughter says she will hear you pray. That's a generational blessing. Because you stood, that you stood with mom, through thick and thin, you blessed this child, and now her family is also rooted in the, in the, in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the God that we serve. Amen. So family struggles and also divorce. So families with these cases struggle with family divorce and battles. Jail children, divorce, and extreme relationship. Marital challenges do not just affect parents, they also affect children. And why? The sins of their fathers are visited on their children in Deuteronomy. I've seen some families, I mean, a part of my family, we are also, we, we've experienced this divorce. My own family, divorce. Part of the family. 
somebody somewhere did something somewhere and now it's having a knock-on effect in my family hallelujah so I'm, 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 I'm privy I know how it feels and I tell people look especially those in my family that I say look I've, I've had enough I said look look at the case that you have whatever you sow the case I'm going to reap I tell them that times it becomes fight but I'm not blind flesh and blood it becomes fight because I've seen it it doesn't help I said, look, keep it together. Yes, keep it together. Then there's a way, there's a way. God will redeem you. Hallelujah. You cannot just give up one day and say, look, enough is enough. No. What are you setting for the next generation? The next one is poverty. Some families live in abject poverty. Any business they go into it crumbles. They sow a seed, it crumbles. They have shops, the thieves will come and knock it, steal from them. They put money in the bank. Miraculously, that money will vanish. Hey. <coughs> anything they touch, or have, anything they touch, it becomes poor for them. And you can see that this family, they are bright. Especially most most families do this. This family that we are privy to. Most of them, you can see that in education, they are the brightest. But when you look at their family background, you can see that it is this poverty. And sometimes the kids, they have to stop. I mean, I'm, I'm not speaking about the UK. The UK education is free. So even if you do not have it, the kids, kids can go. So I'm speaking from where we come from, where I've been able to experience. They have a lot of uh, intellectuals in their family, but because of poverty, they take the kids out of school. And then you see them selling um, stuff on the street. You see that? The poverty is real. Hallelujah. It is a generational case. The next one is debtors. Families with generational cases are always slaves to creditors because they are ever in debt. The Bible says in Proverbs, the rich will rule over the poor and the poor is servant to the lender. Say it. Because you are sat here this morning, you are going to be lenders to nations. Say amen. amen. This is not going to be your portion. You are going to lend a lot to nations to glorify the king amen. of kings, the Lord that you serve. Yes, God wants you all to have a lot, not just leftovers. Children of God, God, you see, God doesn't have take, 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 take pleasure in seeing his children, I mean, broken somewhere when there's not enough on the table to feed the kids. No, God doesn't take pleasure. God takes pleasure when there's a lot of abundance, where we can share. We have a lot where we can share with a lot of people. To preach the gospel to them. That's the God that we serve. Because he said, look, in, in, on, on this earth I create everything. And he said, this is finished. Everything is done. There's a lot of abundance on this planet. But we have to tap in. Hallelujah. Amen. The next one is um, no ambition. Some people, they have no ambition. They have no vision. And they have no direction. That is also a generational curse. Saints. You need to have ambitions in life because you are God's steward. Christ, when he came on this planet, he had ambition, isn't it? He had vision and he had direction. Jesus Christ had vision, ambition and direction. So people with ambition have a strong desire to make a difference in life. They have dreams and aspirations to succeed, but people with generational curse of lack of purpose are always negative in life. They are always full of lukewarmness, uncertainty, apathy, and boredom. I mean, sometimes you, 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 you are on fire for something. God has removed something to you, and you go to somebody you trust, and you lay everything on the table and say, ah, this one is not going to work. <laughs> they killed you. <laughs> they, please, close the book, take your bag, and go home. Because that dream, if you are not careful, that dream is, is, is that day is done. It's put in the box. And package your box and go home and pray that God, please, give me a man or woman of God who will encourage me, empower me to move with this dream. Because, saints, you need people to push you. Yeah. People with the same wavelength as dreamers as you are. Amen. You need people to push you rather than you pulling people when it comes to your dreams. Whatever you do, you need people to push you ahead. Yeah. Other than that, you will be too tired because, look, when you have 10 people, you have one person pulling 10 people behind you. Is it, is it possible? It's not possible. But when you are front and 10 people are, uh, when you are and 10 people are pulling you, it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. These are the people you need in your dreams. 
in your visions, in your lives, in your directions, anywhere you go. People with positivity, people when they speak, you see life in that word. When they leave you, you want more. You say, ah, this person, I want more. Please, can we meet again? These are the people you want to be around. We don't want somebody with a generational curse with negativity. All they know is negativity. You can see that was beautiful. I will look at the sun. It's a pleasant Sunday. They say, ah, it's cold. Come on. It's sunny. It's nice. It's... <laughs> you cannot have it all saints. But even in your darkest moment, praise Christ. Hallelujah. In your darkest moment, when you see, wherever you think there's no way, keep on praising him. Because that is the God that he says. He says, praise me. Keep on praising. I do not like anything. Just praise me. I put you on this plan to worship me. Hallelujah. That is all we, you and I, we need to do. That is all we need to do, saints. Amen. So, number one, how do you break generational curse? Number one, using the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus that was shed on the rock of Calvary. The blood that because you and I, he died for you. The blood that he said, look, when the father is ready to come, he said, look, I am not ready because I'm looking at the blood of Christ. The blood that was shed. So that even I we can have salvation to go to heaven. The blood that was shed so that when we go to heaven, we can sit with the Father and eat with Him. Say, Thank you, Lord, you have delivered me. The blood that makes way for you, wherever you go, at your workplaces, at your school. You see, before you come out of your house, please mark your head with the blood of Christ. Pray over your family with the blood of Christ. And your doors in your homes, mark every door with the blood of Christ. You see, if you don't have an altar, you know, use water, pray over that this water is is the blood of Christ and anoint all your house. It works, saints. The enemy cannot enter. So we use the blood of Christ. According to the Bible says, according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without the shedding of the blood, there's no remission. If Christ didn't shed his blood, sin would not be taken away from us. Saints, we long up till now, we will still be in sin if he didn't die on the cross. So here are two basic principles you need to know. A generational curse, like I said before, it comes through the bloodline, and a generational curse can only be cancelled by the blood of who? Amen. Christ, by the blood of Jesus. Amen. It is all about the blood of Christ. For all our sin that have come short to the glory of God, be justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a, 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 a conciliation through faith in His blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Number two, surrender to God wholeheartedly. Give it all to God. We are told the Bible to submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from us. This means that by submitting to God, you can resist the enemy, and in this turn, you cause him to flee from you. Hallelujah. Number three, confess your sins of your family and your own. Since we are dealing with generational cases, so please do not just confess your own sins. Confess the sins of your um, gone, your, I mean, dead, yes, grandparents, great great grandparents. Pray for their sins to be forgiven because that sin still exists through the bloodline. Hallelujah. So whilst you pray for your sins to be forgiven, you pray for their sins to also be forgiven. And number four, forgive your family members. Many children from families who struggle with generational cases end up physically, mentally, and emotionally abused. I mean, there's a lot of kids in the care home system. And when you look at their families, their background, you can see that there's been a, a series of abuse from their grandparents, their parents, and now on them. So it is likely that they will also carry on that emotional abuse. It needs to be broken. That is why, you see, the reason the care, the care system in, 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 in this country, there's a lot of kids going through is because we have, we have forgotten the God we serve. The best place to preach the gospel is to kids. When they have no one, when there's, there's abuse in their families and they come to the care system, there should be a system where Christ is preached to them. Because that's the only way to save them. It's not medication. They go to the care system and any, 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 any hiccup, they say, ah, oh, this one is, is Crazy, they start giving medication. No, they need the, the word of God. Lord. Hallelujah. They need the word of God first. Because the medication adds a lot. It adds a lot. They need the word of God. So the cancer said this country, if 
Um, I'm praying that um, somebody here this morning, when you are privileged to be at the top, you have influence in the guest, please introduce the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Number four, and um, break the generational curse line. So when you complete that pastor, you'll be ready to break the curse line. Through curse lines, the devil and his demons gain access. Function and feed on. Now you need to be saved first before going through these steps. The blood of Jesus cleanses us all from, from our sins and through it we trample over the enemy. So in the future, it says, when breaking generational cycles, you need to use the weapons of warfare. Hallelujah. It says in Ephesians 6, 11 to 18, it says, For we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers and the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It says, Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, so that you be able to withstand against the schemes of the devil. The armor of God, so that when the enemy comes, you are able to withstand him. Use Ephesians 6, 11 to 8 as your generational curse line. Pray that prayer, Bible verse. Pray, it breaks, it breaks, it breaks everything. So every believer has the, uh, the, the spiritual authority to fight against the enemy and to threat upon his powers. When breaking generational curse, you should stand firm in authority and command every part of the curse in your family to be severed, removed, and broken in Jesus' name. Saints, you have to choose a life and a blessing. God says, I visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations in Exodus. He also blessed up to a thousand generations of them that love me and keep his commandments. And the blessing is much stronger than the curse. So we say amen. amen. So how do you pass this blessing on to future generations? By loving God and keeping his commandments. And it starts by choosing life and blessing. In, 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 in Deuteronomy, the Bible says, See, I have said before you today, life and good Death and evil. I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death. Blessing and curse, and therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Saints, you can pray and make this your prayer complete. Please, could you repeat this prayer after me before we round up? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. That generational curses are broken through faith. In the, blood of Jesus. in the blood of Jesus. I put my faith in the blood. I, put my faith in the blood. I believe Jesus is my mercy seat. I Jesus is my mercy. And that his blood cancels the curse and breaks the national sins. I believe by the blood of Jesus that the generational curse from the law is cancelled. And broken off my family now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. That the blood of Jesus on the mercy is, 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 is a barrier. And that a curse cannot pass the blood. Amen.